Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. Forging is a manufacturing process that involves the shaping of metal by applying localized compressive forces. It is a technique used to create strong and durable metal components for various applications. In this case, the aim is to produce a 78mm round bar from a non-ferrous alloy material. Non-ferrous alloys are those that do not contain iron as the primary element. Examples of non-ferrous metals include aluminum, copper, brass, and bronze. These alloys possess excellent properties such as high strength, corrosion resistance, and thermal conductivity, making them ideal for a wide range of applications. The process of forging with hydraulic hammer starts with a rough cast. The cast in a rectangular shape is heated to a specific temperature to make it malleable. Heating the metal reduces its resistance to deformation, allowing it to be shaped more easily. Once the rough cast reaches the desired temperature, it is placed on the anvil. The hammer is then used to strike the heated metal with controlled force. The hammering action applies compressive forces, causing the material to deform and take the shape of the die. During the forging process, the rough cast is repeatedly struck by the hammer, gradually elongating and widening it. Skilled blacksmiths or operators carefully manipulate the metal's temperature, hammering technique, and the position of strikes to achieve the desired shape and dimensions. In the case of producing a 78mm round bar, the forging process involves shaping the rough cast into a cylindrical form. The repeated hammer blows progressively refine the shape and dimensions, ensuring the bar meets the required specifications. Once the desired shape is achieved, the forged bar undergoes additional processes such as heat treatment, machining, and finishing to enhance its mechanical properties and surface quality. The DMG Mori NTX2500 is a highly capable machine tool used for machining surgical hammers, including the turning of the handle, drilling holes, and milling and machining the hammer heads. To begin, the machine is set up with the surgical hammer blank securely held in the chuck. The turning process is initiated, and the machine rotates the blank while a cutting tool removes material from the outer surface. This creates the handle of the surgical hammer ensuring precise dimensions and a smooth finish. Once the handle is turned, the machine switches to the drilling operation. Specialized drill bits are employed to create the necessary holes in the handle. The machine's CNC technology ensures accurate hole placement and depth, maintaining consistency across multiple parts. After the drilling process, the NTX2500 transitions to milling and machining the hammerheads. The machine utilizes a variety of cutting tools, such as end mills and drills, to perform different operations on the hammerhead simultaneously. This includes shaping the outer profile, creating grooves or slots for aesthetic or functional purposes, and achieving the desired surface finish.
The DMG Mori NTX-1000 is a versatile and advanced machine tool that excels in the field of turn and mill complete machining. In this specific case, the NTX-1000 is employed for the manufacturing process of a shoulder implant made of titanium, showcasing its capabilities in producing high-precision medical components. With its innovative design and cutting-edge technology, the NTX-1000 and the efficient and accurate machining of the shoulder implant. The six-sided turn and mill capability of the machine allows for comprehensive machining of the implant, ensuring all necessary features and dimensions are precisely achieved. Titanium, known for its exceptional strength, corrosion resistance, and biocompatibility, is an ideal material choice for medical implants. The NTX-1000 leverages its robust construction and powerful spindle to effectively handle the titanium workpiece, ensuring smooth cutting and milling operations. The RCM-80 Comprehensive Monitoring Double Axle Friction Welding Machine is an advanced and efficient piece of equipment designed for welding axles. With its unique double bed structure, it provides ample operation space, allowing for easy handling and maneuvering during the welding process. One of the standout features of this machine is its brand new axle housing clamping and positioning device. This innovative mechanism ensures precise alignment and positioning of the axle housing, resulting in high-quality welds. The hydraulic drive system of the RCM80 is of exceptional quality, delivering stable and reliable power output. This ensures consistent and efficient welding operations, minimizing the risk of defects or inconsistencies in the welded joints. Additionally, the machine is equipped with a comprehensive monitoring system. This system allows for real-time monitoring of the welding process, recording and storing important welding data. This data can be easily accessed and analyzed, aiding in quality control and process improvement. Draw Marble Stone Processing is a comprehensive and meticulous process that ensures the transformation of raw stone blocks into high-quality finished slabs. Extraction of Stone Blocks from Quarry The journey of Draw Marble Stone Processing begins at the marble quarries. These quarries are breathtaking sites that resemble grand theaters with their awe-inspiring landscapes. The primary objective of quarrying is to dislodge the stone blocks from the surrounding rock without causing damage. This is achieved through controlled blasting, which creates cracks in the rock, facilitating its removal. In the past, drilling was typically carried out using jackhammers, but nowadays, compressed air-operated hydraulic machines are becoming more prevalent. Once the stone blocks are extracted, they are ready to be processed further. Processing of raw blocks. Marble blocks are known for their enormous size, and the processing work starts by cutting them into smaller, more manageable sizes. This cutting can be done in varying dimensions, considering the requirements of color, grain texture, pattern, and surface finish of the stone. Additionally, durability, strength, and the stone's ability to take a polish are also essential selection criteria. This step ensures that the raw blocks are prepared for the subsequent fabrication and polishing processes.
Fabrication and Polishing of Stone Slabs Once the raw blocks have been processed and cut into smaller sizes, they are ready for fabrication. At Draw Marble, a comprehensive range of pre-cut, raw stone slabs is stocked, from which skilled craftsmen can create a variety of products, such as pool surrounds, staircases, worktops, and hearths. The professional design staff works closely with clients, guiding them through the selection and specification process, ensuring that their design ideas are brought to life. Using traditional and time-tested fabrication techniques, the craftsmen take great pride and care in creating beautiful stone pieces that enhance the beauty of any home or space. Finishing of stone slabs. To achieve the desired surface characteristics, the stone slabs undergo a finishing process. This involves the repeated application of abrasive treatments, which result in a shiny surface with minimal porosity while enhancing the stone's resistance. The polished finish highlights the natural color and properties of the stone, making it a popular choice for interior wall and floor dressing, as well as bench tops and kitchen countertops. However, Due to reduced slip resistance, it is not recommended for outdoor paving. Quality check and ready-to-use slabs. At Draw Marble, quality is of utmost importance. Before the stone slabs are deemed ready for use, they undergo a rigorous quality check process. This includes inspecting the size and specifications, ensuring that the length, width, and thickness fall within the approved tolerance. The diagonal length and angle control are also checked. Material appearance inspection involves scrutinizing the color, texture, spots, color lines, and uniform crystal or grain structure. Surface finishing inspection considers various finishes such as polished, honed, flamed, bush hammered, tumbled, natural cleft, and bevel edge. Additionally, other defects such as scratches, cracks, broken edges, chip edges, pinholes, swirl marks, and repairs are carefully examined. The production process is assessed for the degree of polish, flatness, and angle of straight edges. Only after passing these stringent quality checks are the slabs considered ready for use. Sarl ITC, located in Boumedfa, Algeria, has entrusted Equip Ceramic with the design, construction, and commissioning of their new hollow brick manufacturing facilities. The goal of this project is to meet all customer requirements by creating a high capacity plant equipped with cutting edge technology for efficient and flexible production. The manufacturing process of hollow bricks begins with clay preparation, grinding, and extrusion. A semi-dry method is employed, where raw materials are supplied to the clay processing mechanisms through box feeders. The grinding process starts in a primary crusher and is completed in a disintegrator, followed by a roller mill and a mixer to ensure the optimal grain size of the mixture. The shaping process is achieved using a box feeder, roller mill, and extruder. 
These machines shape the raw material into the desired format of the hollow bricks to be manufactured. The multi-wire vertical cutter is specifically designed to cut hollow and load-bearing blocks with precision. This cutter utilizes multiple wires arranged in a vertical configuration to achieve accurate and clean cuts. The blocks are positioned vertically, and the multiple wires descend simultaneously to make simultaneous cuts along the desired sections of the blocks. This synchronized cutting process ensures that the hollow and load-bearing blocks are cut precisely maintaining their structural integrity and dimensional accuracy. The multi-wire vertical cutter enhances productivity and efficiency in the production of these specialized blocks, meeting the specific requirements of the manufacturing process. The integration of automation systems at every stage has resulted in remarkable improvements in efficiency and productivity. After shaping, the products undergo a drying process in a semi-continuous dryer. Cone-shaped air recirculation fans are employed to distribute hot air vertically throughout the drying tunnels ensuring uniform drying on all levels. The hot air required for the drying process is sourced from the waste kiln recovery system and auxiliary generators. Both air flows are mixed in a mixing box and distributed by centrifugal fans throughout the dryer. The complete loading and unloading lines are designed specifically for the dryers. These lines are equipped with advanced mechanisms that seamlessly handle the movement of products, optimizing the overall production flow. The implementation of these systems has significantly reduced downtime and enhanced productivity. Once dried, the hollow bricks are transported to the firing stage. Before entering the kiln, the products pass through a pre-kiln to gradually increase the temperature, resulting in improved color and reduced risk of spalling. This kiln is built to be durable and have a long lifespan. It is constructed using dry-pressed refractory materials, with walls that are one and a half bricks thick, 345 millimeters. The kiln features a suspended roof with an alveolar geometry. To minimize heat losses, the kilns are equipped with adequate insulation. Layers of insulation materials are arranged to ensure that the exterior temperature of the kiln does not exceed 20 C, which is the ambient temperature. This Gaudi kiln is an evolution of the traditional kiln, featuring a brick masonry exterior structure surrounded by a welded steel enclosure, resulting in complete sealing. This design allows the kiln to absorb expansions caused by temperature changes and enables the firing canal to operate without pressure limits, as the ceiling prevents leaks or unwanted air penetration. The Gaudi kiln incorporates a thicker insulation layer in the kiln roof, eliminating the risk of leaks to the outside and preventing ambient air from penetrating the firing canal. As a result, the kiln roof cooling circuit is unnecessary, further improving energy efficiency. The firing process in equipped ceramic kilns consists of three basic steps, preheating, firing, and cooling. 
These steps are continually innovated and adjusted by the engineering teams to improve results and meet quality standards. The preheating area aims to prepare and preheat the wear as uniformly as possible before entering the firing area. It includes sections such as low temperature preheating, where air recirculation fans minimize temperature variation, and a preparation section before firing, which incorporates side burners to avoid temperature stratification. The firing section adapts the firing curve to the type of clay or the required quality standards. It includes the highest temperature section with group-operated burners, as well as a flashing section where shade variation effects can be achieved on the surface of the products. Rapid cooling sets are also installed to reduce the product temperature. In the cooling section, the product temperature is gradually decreased, and excess heat is supplied to the dryer or pre-kiln to optimize specific energy consumption. It includes a slow cooling area, where care is taken to handle products during the critical stage of quartz transformation, and a final cooling section equipped with waste heat recovery and ambient air injectors to minimize remaining heat in the kiln car. After firing, the products are unloaded from the kiln cars using grippers, which collect the layers of fired bricks and assemble them into horizontally and vertically strapped dispatch packages to ensure stability during transportation. In accordance with the traditional Algerian type, two gaps are left in the bottom layer of the packs to facilitate collection by forklifts. Grippers set two dispatch pack high stacks, improving the efficiency of lift trucks that transport them to the storage area. With this advanced manufacturing process and the use of a traditional tunnel kiln, SARL ITC will be able to produce high-quality hollow bricks efficiently and meet the demands of the Algerian market. Wire bending is a process that involves the manipulation and shaping of wire to create various forms and angles. In a typical wire bending system, such as the one described here, the process begins with a feeder module that supplies the wire. The wire is then passed through a straightener to ensure its smoothness and alignment. Next, the wire enters the bender module where it is bent according to pre-programmed data. The bender mechanism, equipped with a hydraulic cutter, precisely bends and cuts the wire to the desired shape. To enhance the flexibility of the system, an optional turret module can be added. This module provides an additional servo axis and allows for automatic tool changes. Different bending pins, including rollers for generating radii and hard pins for tight bends, can be selected programmatically providing a range of bend radii options. The tanning process is a multi-step procedure that converts raw hides into high-quality leather. Le Farc, a tannery established in 1994 in Leon, Guanajuato, Mexico, follows a comprehensive approach to ensure the production of exceptional leather. Let's delve into the various steps involved in the tanning process. A scraping machine is employed to remove any remaining flesh, fat, or hair from the hides. 
This step prepares the hides for subsequent stages of the tanning process, ensuring a clean and smooth surface. Drums. Following the initial treatment, the hides are transferred to large rotating drums. The hides are subjected to the Qualis system, a specialized tanning process that utilizes heat, pressure, and vacuum. This process improves the penetration of chemicals and dyes. Once the tanning process is complete, the hides are dried to remove excess moisture. Various methods, such as air drying or the use of drying machines, can be employed. Proper drying is crucial to prevent the growth of mold or bacteria and to stabilize the leather. Vacuum machine. A vacuum machine is employed to eliminate any remaining dust or particles from the hides. This step ensures that the leather surface is clean and free from any contaminants. Toggling. Toggling is a mechanical process that involves stretching and flexing the hides. This step improves the softness, elasticity, and overall quality of the leather. Loosening machine. The hides are passed through a loosening machine, which relaxes the fibers and further enhances the flexibility and softness of the leather. Dry drums. The hides are transferred to dry drums, where they are tumbled to achieve the desired texture and hand feel. This process further softens the leather, providing a luxurious finish. Air drying. Following the dry drum process, the hides undergo air drying to remove any remaining moisture and ensure proper curing of the leather. Fleshing. A specialized machine is used to remove excess flesh or fibers from the hides, resulting in a smooth and uniform surface. Finishing. The finishing stage involves several sub-steps that enhance the appearance and quality of the leather. These steps include polishing, staining, rolling, cartegio, sanding and buffing, embossing, and the application of protective coatings. Staining machine. A staining machine is used to add color or decorative patterns to the leather, enhancing its visual appeal. Roller. A roller machine is employed to flatten and smooth the leather, ensuring a consistent thickness throughout. Cartegio. Cartegio is a process that involves sanding and buffing the leather to achieve a refined and polished finish. Engraving machine. An engraving machine can be used to add intricate designs or patterns to the leather, providing a unique and customized look. Gun machine. Specialized gun machines are used to apply final finishes, such as protective coatings or additional decorative elements.
Rotopress. The hides undergo the rotopress process, where they are pressed to achieve a uniform thickness and smooth surface. Transfer and foil machine. A transfer and foil machine is employed to transfer patterns, designs, or metallic finishes onto the leather surface, adding visual interest and uniqueness. Manual combing operation. Skilled artisans manually comb the leather to remove any imperfections and ensure a flawless appearance. Cutting machine. Once the leather is deemed ready, it is sent to a cutting machine, where it is cut into the desired shapes and sizes for various applications. At Primacy Industries, one of the leading candle manufacturers in India, the candle making process employs state of the art machinery. This is the wick coating machine. This machine applies a thin coating of wax to the wick, which helps it burn evenly and efficiently. The coated wicks are then carefully stored for further use. Next, the factory has a dedicated color mixing area. Here, workers meticulously measure and mix the desired colors for the candles. This ensures consistent and vibrant hues throughout the production process. Once the wicks and colors are ready, the candle production moves to the rotating drum. The drum serves as a mixing vessel where the wax and other additives, such as fragrance oils, are combined. The rotation of the drum ensures thorough blending, resulting in a homogeneous mixture. After the wax mixture reaches the desired consistency, it is time to shape the candles. The prepared mixture is poured into specially designed molds that determine the shape and size of the candles. These molds can vary in shape and can range from simple cylindrical forms to intricate designs. Once the candles have solidified, they are carefully removed from the molds. Workers trim excess wax and inspect each candle for any imperfections or defects. Quality control is of utmost importance at Primacy Industries to ensure that only flawless candles proceed to the next stage. Once the candles are in the cups, they move to the labeling section. Here, labels containing essential information, such as the brand name, fragrance, and safety instructions, are affixed to each glass cup. The labels not only provide vital details but also enhance the overall presentation of the candles. Finally, the candles are packaged for distribution. Primacy Industries employs efficient packaging techniques to ensure that the candles are protected during transportation. Italy, particularly the town of Bassano del Grappa in the Vicenza district, is renowned for producing the finest gold jewelry. Today, Italian gold factories combine high technology with traditional techniques to create the world's best gold chains and jewelry. The process begins with pure 24 karat gold which is then alloyed with other metals to achieve the desired purity level and color. The gold and alloys are melted into ingots, rods, or plates, and assay samples are taken to ensure the gold's quality. The creation and crafting of an Omega necklace or bracelet, a popular style of gold jewelry, involves a meticulous process that combines traditional techniques with modern technology. Mesh construction. The Omega jewelry begins with the mesh construction called Tosuto. Each wire that makes up the mesh is coiled using a special machine, similar to a spring. The coils are interlocked to create a knitted appearance, making the bracelet or necklace flexible and comfortable to wear. Gold sheet fabrication. A 14 karat gold sheet is fabricated for the outside covering of the Omega. The gold sheet needs to have the correct thickness to ensure the piece's weight specifications. It is cut into thin strips, which are then bent into tubes of the appropriate diameter. Assembly. The Tosuto mesh is cut to the proper width and length and inserted into the gold tube. The ends of the mesh are crimped to secure them in place. 
This assembly process combines the gold mesh with the outer gold tube, creating the structure of the omega. Compression and shaping. To give the omega its shape and strength, each piece goes through a unique compression process. Pressure is exerted on the jewelry piece at 1,000 pounds per square inch. The internal shape of the die used determines whether the piece will have a flat or rounded design. Pre-polishing and finishing. After compression, the Omega piece becomes rigid and requires pre-polishing and a limbering process. Quality control measures are implemented to ensure the jewelry meets the highest standards. Locks and figure 8 safety clasps are added before the final polishing and finishing, which gives the piece a mirror-like finish. Here is a brief overview of how fashion bracelets are made. Gold preparation. The gold is rolled and flattened to achieve the desired thickness for the bracelet. This step ensures that the gold is malleable and ready for the shaping process. Stamping and pattern creation. The style or design of the bracelet is stamped out, creating a three-dimensional pattern. This process involves using specialized machines to create the desired shape and texture on the gold. Assembly. The back of the stamped piece is closed and finished to give it a solid appearance. Holes are drilled in the sides to allow for hinges or pins, which give the bracelet its flexibility. Some of the individual pieces may require hand assembly, where wires acting as hinges or pins are carefully inserted, soldered, and clipped away. Finishing touches. The sides of the bracelet are meticulously finished through grinding, lapping, and polishing, giving the piece its final look. These steps are crucial for achieving a smooth and polished surface. The creation and crafting of a Figaro chain, a popular style of gold chain, involves a precise and intricate process that combines various techniques. Wire preparation. The process begins with gold rods being stretched through a series of holes until the desired length and thickness are achieved. During this stretching process, the wire is heated and cooled to restore its flexibility and strength. Wire shaping. Once the gold wire is at the desired thickness, it is put through a series of stretching treatments to ensure the final specifications for chain making. The spooled wire is fed into a machine that bends, curls, and cuts the wire into ringlets. The shape of the ringlets varies depending on the pattern of the chain. Figaro machine. The Figaro machine, a combination of two different machines, is used to link together two different shapes and sizes of chain links. The machine is programmable to achieve the desired link combination. It executes a sequence of three smaller links followed by one long link, creating the characteristic Figaro look. Soldering and link formation. The ringlets are run through a powdered solder bath, and then they are placed on a conveyor oven, which heats and solders the open ends, forming closed links. Another machine hammers the chain, preparing it for the next process, known as diamond cutting. Diamond cutting. The Figaro chain undergoes a diamond cutting process to give it beveled edges and a mirror-like finish. This process can also create various patterns on the chain's surface, adding visual interest and enhancing its overall aesthetics. Final assembly and finishing. The chain is cut to specific lengths, and locks or clasps are attached to each end, allowing for easy fastening and securing around the wrist or neck. The chain then goes through additional polishing and finishing to ensure a flawless and high-quality appearance.
Solid Cam Drain is a powerful computer-aided manufacturing cam software solution specifically designed for turning operations. It seamlessly integrates with SolidWorks, providing a comprehensive solution for designing and manufacturing precision parts. With Solid Cam Drain, users can optimize their turning processes, enhance productivity, and achieve high-quality results. It supports a wide range of turning profiles, including roughing, finishing, threading, grooving, and drilling. Solid Cam Drain is compatible with various types of machine tools, including two axis lathes, multi spindle machines, and complex turning milling centers with counter spindles. It seamlessly handles the transfer of workpieces and updated raw material from the main spindle to the counter spindle in multi spindle machines. This ensures a highly efficient and time optimized machining sequence. The software includes a library of standard chuck jaws, which can be expanded to accommodate custom workholding solutions. SolidCam continuously updates the remaining raw material during each job, regardless of whether it is a simple two-axis lathe or a complex CYB turning milling center with dual turrets and counter spindle. Solid Cam Drain offers advanced turning features to enhance performance in turning applications. These features include simultaneous roughing with two tools, allowing for fast roughing and turning of long and large workpieces. Tools can be employed simultaneously or staggered using modern cutting strategies. Another useful feature is the ability to perform angled plunge cuts, both on the inside and outside of the workpiece, enabling precise machining at defined angles. Additionally, Solid Cam Drain supports manual turning operations, allowing users to create turning profiles based on custom geometries without the need for a workpiece model or volume body show. For turning, milling centers with a tilted B axis, Solid Cam Drain enables four axis simultaneous turning. This feature facilitates the production of undercuts in a single operation and supports two tool types outer roughing tools and outer plunge tools. Solid Cam also provides powerful tools for synchronizing multiple turrets in multi turret machines. A timeline with all the operations and simple commands allows users to coordinate synchronized operations, which can then be previewed in the machine simulation. The DMG Mori DMU75 monoblock is a highly advanced 5-axis, vertical CNC machining center that excels in aluminum machining. This cutting-edge equipment incorporates state-of-the-art 5-axis simultaneous technology, allowing for intricate and complex machining operations with exceptional precision. One of the standout features of the DMU75 monoblock is its tool magazine, which boasts an impressive 60 slots. This extensive tool capacity minimizes the time required for tool changes, resulting in enhanced productivity and reduced downtime during machining processes. The machine's ability to swiftly and seamlessly transition between tools enables efficient production of both individual components and small series parts. With a spindle speed of 18,000 revolutions per minute RPM, the DMU75 monoblock delivers exceptional performance and efficiency in aluminum machining. The high spindle speed ensures rapid material removal and precise contouring, resulting in superior surface finishes and dimensional accuracy. This makes the machine ideal for a wide range of applications, 
from aerospace and automotive components to intricate architectural and industrial designs. The process begins by heating the non-ferrous alloy to a specific temperature, known as the forging temperature, which allows it to become malleable without melting. The heated alloy is then placed on the anvil within the hydraulic hammer. The hydraulic hammer, also known as a power hammer, utilizes hydraulic pressure to deliver rapid and powerful blows to the alloy. These repetitive strikes exert force on the material, causing it to deform and take the shape of the die cavity. The controlled and precise nature of the hydraulic hammer enables the creation of intricate and accurate ring shapes. The intense impact from the hydraulic hammer not only shapes the alloy but also refines its grain structure. This process, known as grain flow, enhances the mechanical properties of the ring, making it stronger and more durable. The high-speed deformation also eliminates internal defects and enhances the overall integrity of the ring. The Bost VTH100C is a state-of-the-art vertical lathe designed for high-precision machining operations. This single-column vertical lathe incorporates advanced features and cutting-edge technology to deliver exceptional performance and accuracy. With its vertical orientation and the ability to move in the Y-axis, the machine offers significant advantages in terms of versatility and efficiency. One of the key benefits of the 100C is its compact design. The single column structure allows for a smaller footprint compared to horizontal lathes, making it suitable for space-constrained manufacturing environments. Despite its compact size, this vertical lathe offers a generous working envelope, enabling the machining of large workpieces with ease. The Y-axis capability of the machine enhances its versatility. This axis enables the vertical lathe to perform complex machining operations, such as grooving, threading, and contouring. The Y-axis movement allows for precise positioning of the cutting tool, resulting in improved accuracy and surface finish. Additionally, the Y-axis enables the vertical lathe to handle asymmetrical workpieces and perform off-center operations efficiently. The BOST 100C is equipped with advanced control systems and automation features, ensuring optimal operational efficiency. The lathe's control panel offers user-friendly interfaces and intuitive programming options, simplifying the setup and operation process. The automation capabilities include tool changers, automatic workpiece loading unloading systems, and real-time monitoring systems, further enhancing productivity and reducing manual intervention. In terms of machining capabilities, the 100C boasts a powerful spindle that delivers high torque and rotational speed. This allows for efficient material removal and enables the lathe to handle a wide range of materials, from soft metals to hard alloys. The vertical orientation of the lathe ensures excellent chip evacuation, minimizing the risk of chip accumulation and potential damage to the workpiece or cutting tool. Horizontal terminal lathes are advanced machining tools that combine the capabilities of a lathe and a milling machine into a single, versatile piece of equipment. 
These machines are designed to handle complex machining operations with precision and efficiency. The horizontal orientation of these terminal lathes allows for the simultaneous operation of turning and milling processes. This enables manufacturers to perform multiple operations on a workpiece without the need for repositioning or additional setups, resulting in reduced cycle times and increased productivity. The terminal lathes feature a powerful spindle that can rotate at high speeds, allowing for fast and accurate material removal during both turning and milling operations. The machines are equipped with a range of cutting tools, including drills, end mills, and indexable inserts, providing flexibility in machining different shapes and features. The T260 hydraulic chain saw machine is a result of meticulous development and extensive research on materials and components. It represents a new frontier in chain cutting, offering exceptional efficiency and performance while ensuring reliability and safety in various working conditions. One of its notable features is the variable delivery main pump, which enables precise regulation of the cutting speed. This feature optimizes performance according to the hardness of different materials, enhancing overall cutting capabilities. FET 260 is capable of making both vertical and horizontal cuts ranging from 1 to 2 meters in length. It can handle marble and soft stones using tungsten bits, allowing for both wet and dry operations. When working with hard stones, the machine can be equipped with a special chain featuring polycrystalline diamond bits. In this case as well, it can operate with either water or in a dry mode, providing versatility for various cutting applications. The hydraulic system incorporated into the machine is purposefully designed and engineered using top quality components available in the market. This ensures utmost reliability and safety during operation. A single motor controls two pumps in line. The first pump, of the variable delivery type, controls the chain movement, while the second is a compensated piston pump. This innovative design ensures that only the necessary amount of oil required for the work is raised to the working pressure minimizing wastage and optimizing energy efficiency. Consequently, this system contributes to maximum energy saving and environmental respect. Additionally, the T260 is equipped with an air-oil heat exchanger enabling it to operate in geographical areas with challenging environmental conditions such as deserts or locations where water is scarce. This capability allows for dry operations in such situations. For ease of transport, the T260 comes with four independent hydraulic pistons that enable precise alignment of the machine with the desired cutting position. The leveling system incorporated into the machine makes the operation extremely user-friendly, facilitating proper movement of the rails for optimal positioning. Splitting stone is a process that has been practiced for centuries, dating back to ancient times when humans first discovered the potential of stone as a building material. The act of splitting stone involves breaking a large, solid piece of rock into smaller, more manageable pieces that can be used for construction, sculpture, or other purposes. This technique has played a crucial role in the development of architecture and civilization as a whole. There are several methods used for splitting stone each with its own advantages and challenges. 
One of the earliest methods employed by ancient civilizations was the use of wedges and hammers. A series of wedges would be driven into the natural seams or fractures in the stone, gradually exerting pressure until the stone split along these lines. This method required skill, precision, and patience, as well as a thorough understanding of the stone's natural structure. Over time, technological advancements led to the invention of more efficient tools and techniques for splitting stone. For instance, the introduction of explosives revolutionized the quarrying industry. By drilling holes into the stone and placing explosive charges, stonecutters could shatter large rock formations with controlled precision. This method significantly increased the speed and scale of stone extraction, enabling the construction of massive structures such as cathedrals and palaces. In modern times, mechanical methods have become commonplace for splitting stone. Hydraulic splitters, for example, use hydraulic pressure to exert force on the stone, causing it to crack along predetermined lines. This method is highly efficient and allows for greater control over the splitting process, resulting in more precise cuts. Moreover, the introduction of diamond-tipped saws and wire saws has further enhanced the accuracy and speed of stone splitting making it easier to obtain thin and precise stone slabs for various applications. Splitting stone requires not only technical knowledge but also an understanding of the properties and characteristics of different types of rock. Each type of stone has its unique composition, grain structure, and natural fissures, which influence the splitting process. The experience and expertise of stonemasons and stonecutters are instrumental in determining the most effective method for splitting a particular stone and achieving the desired outcome. The applications of split stone are vast and diverse. From construction projects to art and sculpture, split stone is widely used for its durability, aesthetics, and versatility. It can be found in buildings, monuments, walls, and pavements, showcasing its enduring appeal and timelessness. The Bost AR90 is an exceptional milling machine specifically designed for crankshaft rough milling, a crucial process in the production of crankshafts for various industries. This advanced machine combines cutting-edge technology, robust construction, and precise engineering to deliver efficient and accurate results. With its sturdy and rigid structure, the Bost AR90 ensures stability and minimizes vibrations during the milling process. This stability is essential for achieving high-quality surface finishes and dimensional accuracy in the rough milling of crankshafts. The machine's construction is built to withstand the demanding requirements of heavy-duty machining operations. The Bost AR90 is equipped with a powerful spindle that drives the cutting tool at high rotational speeds. This enables rapid material removal during rough milling while maintaining excellent precision. The machine offers a range of spindle options to accommodate various cutting tools, allowing operators to optimize the milling process for different crankshaft designs and materials.
Precision is a key feature of the Bost AR90. It incorporates advanced motion control systems that ensure accurate tool positioning and smooth toolpath execution. This level of precision guarantees consistent and uniform material removal across the entire crankshaft surface, resulting in balanced and high-performance crankshafts. The machine's control system provides a user-friendly interface for programming and monitoring the milling process. Operators can input specific parameters such as feed rates, cutting depths, and tool paths to tailor the milling operation to the requirements of each crankshaft. Real-time monitoring and feedback systems enable operators to make necessary adjustments and ensure the milling process remains within specified tolerances. To enhance the machine's productivity and longevity, the Bost AR90 incorporates features such as a cooling and lubrication system. This system effectively dissipates heat generated during milling, preventing overheating and prolonging the lifespan of both the cutting tools and the machine itself. 